Following the release of the body camera video of the deadly police shooting of Dexter Reed, CBS2 is always investigating, digging into several unanswered questions tonight. Here we go again. Young man named Dexter Reed has been shot and killed by the police in Chicago. Not a surprise. Um, I got a couple questions, though, like seriously. We are getting new perspectives questioning how many shots Reed fired himself, why he was pulled over in the first place, and the recommendations on what should happen to the officers involved. That's what CBS 2's Jermont Terry is looking into live in the control room now. Jermont. Erica and Joe Copa recommends the four officers who fired those shots, killing Dexter Reed, not carry their badge nor weapon, essentially stripping them of their police powers. Now, tonight we've learned that the head of COPA calls into question that so-called reason the officers pulled Reed over. When the five tactical unit officers approached Dexter Reed's SUV, the tinted windows were up. Roll the windows down. Officers ordered Reed to lower and keep the driver window down so they could see what was going on inside the SUV. Yet COPA says that hard to see through window makes it hard to believe the officer's rationale they pulled him over for not wearing a seatbelt. But there may be other interviews uh, that have to occur as well to understand what brought the officers to performing traffic stops as tactical officers in the 11th district. Everybody talks about how dark the tint was. Well, then the tint was illegal. That would be a justification for the stop also. The Fraternal Order of Police President John Kentanzara says it does not negate the fact Reed fired first and more than once. He fired 11 rounds. He continued to fire at the officers while they were firing those 90 rounds. That's just the facts of the case. Yet COPA's chief administrator told CBS2's Chris Ty, COPA has an open investigation into another traffic stop involving the same five officers, which occurred less than a month prior to this incident and was purportedly also based on a seatbelt violation. COPA is currently investigating that complaint. These officers have been engaged in traffic stops that have led to other civilian complaints that our office has received. And that's one reason COPA wants the four who fired stripped of their police powers along with some in the community who came out Wednesday night to an 11th district council meeting. They never held accountable for their actions. How do you ask young teenage boys to respect people that could just kill them and walk away scot-free? Ken Zara says stripping them of their powers is beyond far-reaching. It is almost an automatic presumption of some level of guilt, at, whether they want to admit it or not. It's a knee-jerk reaction that COPA does far too many times needlessly just because they can. And while COPA wants the police superintendent to strip these officers of their police powers, tonight they remain on the 30-day leave. CPD tells us until all the facts are known and the investigation is over, they will not comment further on this case. Um, this, this guy obviously uh, got pulled over by the police, and as you can see in the video, uh, was asked to roll the window down um, and First of all, doesn't comply with that. All right, officers have their gun on him. And he starts shooting at the police officers. This is on the body cam, okay? Everybody's going to be they're going to be outraged, all right? Because I guess their argument is that why should these young men respect police officers when they can just shoot them down and get away with it? That's what the woman said in a clip. Um my question to that is, does that give him the right to shoot at anybody? Now, what, this is Chicago we're talking about, all right? It's Chicago we're talking about. How does it feel to be a police officer in Chicago? I wonder. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to I mean, luckily they have body cams where we can actually see. What if there weren't body cams? I'm telling you, bro. It'd be a big mess. How do you get pulled over? What? First of all, where'd you get a gun? Where did Dexter get the gun? That, that's what we need to find that out, too. Isn't it? I'm going to be following this story very closely because, you know, I've been talking about Chicago pretty much all week, you know. Um, and there's always something going on in Chicago, sadly. I don't feel sorry for this young man. I don't. Okay. I just don't feel sorry for him. Um, if you're going to shoot at a police officer, you're asking for it. You're going to get dropped. Okay. 
That's what's going to happen. And I'm not trying to sound ca- uh, callous. But if you're going to shoot at a police officer, what do you expect to happen? You know, I've gone over with my son uh, just recently. And I said, just comply, man. Just do what the officer says. And then actually go out of your way to be uh, super nice. Now, I've watched a couple of videos where, you know, the gangs of Chicago, these guys literally feel like they should they have to carry guns around wherever they go. All right. That's where your gun problem is. The illegal gun problem is uh, places like Chicago. Um, but how I guess another question is, how are they going to. Uh, Treat the officers like what? What are they, what are they gonna? What are they going to go through here? Because um, they were shot at. Okay, they were shot at. Are, are they going to be looked at like the criminals? Are they going to be going to jail? Are they going to burn the cities down over this? Um, obviously the young man uh, was guilty uh, of shooting at the police officers, which would have which triggered the entire thing. Um, if that wouldn't have happened, he would still have his life. Okay. Like, you just pull over and put your hands on the steering wheel. What's the big deal? Okay. But you got a gun on you. You're wrong. It's not a legal gun. Uh, they didn't say that Dexter had a, a gun permit or anything. You know it's a liberal city, so it's, you know, you, you got to have the, have a gun permit to have the gun, which they make it almost impossible. Um, but uh, what's going to happen to the officers? We all know that the community is in an uproar. Women got out there with their emotions. They're crying and yelling and screaming. Um, but the facts, the facts are going to win this. The facts are going to be shown. Looks pretty clear to me. I mean, thank, thank goodness for the body cam. Thank goodness that we can actually see what's going to be. These officers, man, I, you know. I want to weigh in on this for a minute because I, being a police officer in Chicago, I, I don't, I don't know that I could do it. You know, you, 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 it's, it's the last place you want to be: Washington D.C., Chicago, Baltimore, Atlanta, Philadelphia. These are the last places you want to be a police officer. Okay, you, you can't win. All right. Now, they said these officers were uh, involved in a couple of traffic stops where they got complaints. Yeah, they're going to complain on you <laughs> all the time. That's exactly what they do, complain. It doesn't matter what you do. All right? You're the enemy because you're an officer and you're upholding the law. Basically, that's how this goes. All right? And the black community is going to be in an uproar, okay? People that ain't been in the hood and they, they ain't been to the hood in 50, 60 years, they're going to be outraged, okay? Then the old people not being targeted. It's the it's the black little children that are being targeted. You know, police officers are supposed to uh, walk on eggshells uh, whenever they make a traffic stop. Traffic stops are deadly. Okay, they turn out very bad sometimes. <laughs> All right, let's look at cops. Look at the you know, just look at an episode of cops when they pull people over, especially when they don't com- when people don't comply when the officer says you know put your hands on the steering wheel. Uh, t- turn the engine off. Step out of the car. You'll be surprised how many people don't step out of the car. How many people start shooting at the officer. Your life is on the line every single day. Okay. Here's my thing. Police officers put their lives on the line. Firefighters put their lives on the line. EMT, they're out there saving people's lives. And they get paid a little teeny tiny bit of money compared to a Hollywood actor. <laughs> okay. You don't want to talk about underpaid and unfair. Try, try being a police officer in Chicago or Baltimore. Try making it through a couple, couple months of that. You know, we're going to keep an eye on this story, guys. But my guess is that justified, absolutely justified. You know. If I were one of the police officers, I would I would fight. Okay, I would fight very hard. The guy's a criminal. Uh, bottom line, we see it all the time in the inner cities. But you know they want to blame it on the white man always. 
That's always the story. It never changes. Instead of, uh, you know, the parents taking accountability. And, and, and they don't hold their kids accountable. That's why they feel like they can get out there and do this. It's not because police officers out here just shooting people randomly. No. These guys are drunk, high. A lot of them are stealing cars. This guy just so happened to buy his own car, which is great. But if you're going to, if you're not going to obey traffic stops, why have a new car? It doesn't make any sense. Just comply when you get pulled over, guys. If you're watching this video and you don't know what to just comply. Officer pull you over, just pull over. Do what the officer say so you can go home. Okay? So you can go home the next day. <laughs> guys, like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, this has been Yup, I said it.